I have been working on this game for a while now, and up until now the game hasn't really been fun. Normally when making games, you try to figure out how to make the game fun in its prototyping phase, and if you can't make it fun, then you pitch your game idea to Ubisoft. In the early days of development for Static Mag, the levels were fun to run around, but the enemies were never fun to fight. But rather than scrapping the project, I decided to keep working on it because I figured my game was similar enough to other successful FPS games, and that it was just a matter of trial and error until I found out what worked. The only problem is it's a year and a half later and the game still sucks, so I figured it's about time to make the game fun. I haven't really talked about this much, but the game is supposed to be a movement shooter, where instead of popping in and out of cover, you are encouraged to move through the level and get up close to the enemies. One problem is the way the enemies work discourages this type of playstyle. Up until now the enemies have been pretty aggressive and would move towards the player, which made it difficult to push through the level. Instead it was more like strafe in a corner and wait for all the enemies to come to you. To fix this issue I implemented zones, which are boxes that I can place around the level that restrict where certain enemies can go. This keeps the enemies from chasing the player around the level, and makes the player go towards them which encourages the player to move around more. The zones were pretty easy to add because with the existing Navgrid system, there are predetermined points where enemies move to, so it was just a matter of limiting enemies to positions within their box. It is also possible for enemies to switch zones, or be freed from one if certain enemies die, but I'm not sure how useful this actually is. Another issue with the enemies is that they would all attack the player simultaneously, which was overwhelming since instead of just dealing with the enemies closest to you, you had to worry about all of them. Which made the game not fun, because any little slip up, um, and you're dead. Not to mention it sounded terrible when all the enemies were attacking you at once. So like how stunt guys in the background of a fight scene do some random bullshit while the protagonist is busy, the enemies in the game should do the same. That is, don't attack the player if they are busy fighting other enemies. But rather than just having it so that the closest enemies attack the player, I wanted certain enemies to have a higher attack priority over others. For example, the heavy enemy that has a LMG should have a higher priority over the normal enemies to make the player prioritize killing them first. While the drone should have a low priority so they don't shoot the player from above when their focus is on the ground enemies. I also wanted the priority system to be flexible since there are many cases where a more static approach would fail. As an example, let's say there are two normal enemies and one heavy enemy in the same area. Even though the heavy enemy has a higher attack priority, since it's far away from the player, it should give its priority to one of the normal enemies because the player is more likely to be focused on them. But if the player runs past the two enemies, then the heavy should take back its priority. So the way I went about implementing the system is by using weights where each enemy gets assigned a weight based on a few things like the type of enemy, the distance from the player, and how visible they are. Then after the weights have been updated, the two enemies with the largest weights are allowed to attack. The decision for letting only two enemies attack at the same time was completely random but ended up working well so I just kinda kept it. But after doing more playtesting, I came across another problem with the enemies, which was their aim. Enemies would start off aiming directly at you, but since the bullets have travel time, if you kept moving the bullets would miss. However, if you keep moving in relatively the same direction, the enemies would become more accurate and start leading their shots. Which I found to be a problem because it punished the player for moving unless they constantly switch directions to reset the enemy accuracy. This made strafing back and forth the best strategy, which just felt awkward. And it also made the enemies feel random, where sometimes they would miss you, but other times they beamed you. So I decided to remove the ability for enemies to lead their shots, and right away the game's difficulty went from bullshit sicko mode to fair but still pretty hard. Which I'm fine with because the current levels are designed for myself, the number one static mag player in the world, and the game isn't supposed to be easy. So once the enemies allowed the player to push through the level, I decided to focus on making them react more to the player's actions. I downloaded a couple of damage react animations from Mixamo, and added a bit of logic to the enemies to have them flinch when taking damage. They also stopped shooting temporarily to give the player some time to breathe and allow them to get closer to the enemy without worrying about taking damage. I also made the enemies stumble when their weapon is pulled, or when they get hit by a throwable. 
And now when an enemy loses their gun, they play an animation where they reach behind their back and grab another one from their ass, instead of just magically having a gun appear in their hands. The same animations apply to the heavy enemy, which is also on its 17th iteration. During playtesting, the old heavy enemies with the shields were too tanky and halted the flow of gameplay, so now they more closely resemble the normal enemies, where they have a primary and a secondary weapon. The primary being an LMG, and the secondary being a machine pistol, so no matter what state the heavy is in, they'll always be spitting out bullets. I also got rid of their shield because I think it would make more sense for a future enemy with less base health to have. And unlike the normal enemies, the heavy won't stop shooting with every damage taken, but will stumble after taking enough consecutive damage, which should make them a bit harder than the normal enemies. The last thing I added to the enemies was a small delay to their attack when coming out from behind an object to give the player more time to react. Since before, sometimes when rounding a corner, you would get ass blasted as soon as you saw one pixel of an enemy. The last thing I worked on improving was how the drones move, since my first implementation let them freestyle a bit too much and they would end up flying into a wall. So I decided to turn their existing 3D grid of potential positions into a navigation grid and have them follow a path instead of moving freely. The first step was limiting the potential positions for the drones to prevent them from flying too close or through any objects. So when generating the grid, it now performs some checks and will remove any point that could potentially cause a problem. Then when a drone is instructed to move to a new position, the closest node to the drone is used as a starting point and the A-star algorithm is used to determine what nodes form a path to the target. It then hands off the list of nodes to the drone path class, which constructs a path using Bezier curves to make the drone move a lot smoother. And with all that done, the drones no longer crash into shit. But I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, so see ya.